We want to begin this half hour with new developments at the trial of George Zimmerman. Now in its third week, the defense is presenting its case. NBC's Kerry Sanders is covering the trial for us. He's at the courthouse this morning. Kerry, good morning. Well, good morning, Savannah. The defense team says they plan to wrap up their presentation to the jury by mid to late week. Defense attorney Mark O'Mara says among the witnesses he plans to call to the stand, Trayvon Martin's father. Among the witnesses the defense will call, perhaps as early as today, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin's father, Tracy Martin. When police first played a neighbor's 911 call for Tracy Martin, the question was whose voice could be heard screaming for help. A Sanford police detective wrote in his report, I asked Mr. Martin if the voice calling for help was that of his son. Mr. Martin, clearly emotionally impacted by the recording, quietly responded, no. George Zimmerman's defense attorney, Mark O'Mara. Actually, I think what Tracy Martin said was that's not my son's voice. And I think that that's information the jury needs to have. In court, the jury has listened to that tape repeatedly, as has Tracy Martin. Whose voice is that? Trayvon. Trayvon Martin's parents have not commented during the trial, but they did an extensive interview with NBC News a month before the trial began. I never said, no, that's not Trayvon. Um, but after going back to the mayor's office and having a chance to listen to the tape for at least, I don't know how long, we just played it over and over and over again, I knew then that that was my son. In court, Trayvon Martin's mother and George Zimmerman's mother came to different conclusions. Ma'am, that screaming or yelling, do you recognize that? Yes. And who do you recognize that to be, ma'am? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. Do you know whose voice that was screaming in the background? Yes, sir. And whose voice was that? My son, George. George Zimmerman has pled not guilty to second-degree murder. He says he shot and killed Trayvon Martin in self-defense. Savannah? All right, Carrie Sanders at the courthouse. Thank you. Lisa Bloom is today's legal analyst. Lisa, good morning to you. Good morning. So now we have dueling witnesses, two mothers, each of whom passionately believes it was her son who was crying out for help. Help. Does that testimony sort of cancel each other out, or was one more credible than the other? Uh, I think it has to cancel out. I don't know how the jury can possibly decide which of these two young men was screaming on that 911 tape. I don't think that's going to be a significant factor. How does the defense get around the fact that if it was George Zimmerman crying for help, as soon as we hear the gunfire ring out, the, the crying stops. Well, I think that's an important point. They say the threat had been eliminated once he shot Trayvon Martin. Therefore, he didn't need to yell out anymore. But Zimmerman himself says he didn't think Trayvon Martin was dead upon shooting him. In fact, minutes later, he still thought he was alive. There's so much focus on whose voice was it on the tape. But does that even get to the central issue? I mean, if you were in a fight, presumably both men could have been yelling at some point. Except that many witnesses have said there's only one voice yelling out on that recording. Recording, and you really only hear one voice. Seems like the thrust of the prosecution's case is to put on all the different stories that George Zimmerman has told, and I assume they're setting up a closing argument that will highlight all of the inconsistencies. Is there anything to you that really stands out as, as an inconsistency that's very material, that will matter in the end? Let me tell you about a fact that I think is very important. Zimmerman says that his gun was holstered behind him, on the rear of his right hip. He also says that he was down on his back. Trayvon Martin was straddling him punching him and threatening his life, that Trayvon Martin saw the gun and reached for it. I don't know how he could have seen through Zimmerman's body to the gun behind him. Additionally, the gun and the holster are both black. Numerous witnesses have said it was a very dark and rainy night. So, you know, that's sort of a physics problem, I think, that Zimmerman has in his testimony. Well, we may see prosecutors put it together just like that in the closing. We'll see. Lisa, thank you very much.